Now, despite years of acknowledgement of the need to invest a lot more in universal health care and quality education, close to half a billion people around the world still do not have access to these services even at a basic level. That's one of the more sobering conclusions of a report from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. A child born in Chad, for example, according to this report, is 55 times more likely to die than a child in Finland. But it gets worse from there. The report also delves into subnational data across a range of countries. In Nigeria, for instance, there's a massive seven-year difference in average primary education levels between Jigawa State in the northwest and Akiti State in the south. And all of this within the same country, remember. The report also examines the effects of the gender gap, even when education outcomes are relatively level. So, for example, despite having similar average education levels for women, Botswana has three times as many women in its workforce than Ghana. So, earlier on, I spoke to Mark Sisman from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation ahead of the report's release. I started by asking him why so many countries are forecast to not meet the 2030 goals, or even, in some cases, all the way out to 2050. Well, before I go with what's going wrong, I want to go with what's going right, which is, you know, this report has brand new data, which we've never really done, that goes down to district level across nearly every developing country. And the good news is, over the last 20 years, in over 99% of districts, every country in the world has improved in healthcare outcomes and educational outcomes. So the point is the overall trajectory is very positive, even though the the gloom and doom of, of sort of current discussions. The bad news is that also highlights massive inequalities. Inequalities at a global level between rich and poor countries, perhaps even more striking inequalities at a national level, massive inequalities sometimes. You can be five times or six times more likely to die of a preventable childhood death if you're in one part of, say, southern Nigeria than a part of northern Nigeria or four times more likely to do the same if you're in Kerala state versus you know, Uttar Pradesh state in, in India. And then last but definitely not least, also at a household level, you know, whether you're born a, boy or born a boy or a girl has a massive difference in your outcomes in terms of learning and health. With, with respect to health and education, um, especially in Africa, we've heard governments acknowledging that there is a problem, a large problem in various aspects of those two uh, for years, and they've thrown quite a bit of cash at the problem. Um, it's been over a decade now, actually almost two decades, since Kenya started um, throwing a ton of money at public education, trying to increase, to essentially have universal primary education available to all people. So using that as the pattern, we've thrown a lot of resources at the problem, but why are the outcomes not matching the resources that have been allocated to these issues, especially in health and education? At the national level, we are. Uh, in most countries. Again, that's why I give you that 20-year number. And a country like Kenya or even a country like Nigeria or pretty well everywhere across the continent has seen massive improvements in aggregate child mortality reductions and massive improvements in aggregate years in school over that period. And that is a sort of resources have gone in to do that. But what you still have is these massive discrepancies in between urban and rural areas, between different rural areas. Some of that is resourcing. Some of that is about policies. Some of that is simply about political will and implementation. Some of it is about skill sets and community training. There are different reasons behind it. Uh, but highlighting the gap is both, at one level, very depressing, because you see that, but it also should be encouraging, because it shows you that success is possible even with the existing tools and resources we have. There are models out there of how to do this effectively. Give me one example um, of, of those solutions you talk about in the report. One example that works, that is efficient, that stands out? A very simple one is effective primary health care. When you have trained community health workers in primary health posts that are fully equipped and fully stocked and they provide treatments at point of service, antenatal or postnatal care to pregnant mothers, something, that makes a massive difference in maternal outcomes. So uh, this actually is a statistic which isn't in the report because we focus on child mortality, but I was recently in Nigeria and saw that there was a tenfold difference in maternal mortality rates between some of the north and some of the south. A lot of that is just simply there are facilities available in the south where pregnant mothers can go in for antenatal and postnatal treatment and get the care at the point of care that they need that simply doesn't happen in some parts of the north.